doing, Patty? We have some new neighbors. A moving guy just pulled up next door. I wonder what they're like. Well, you can give me a report later. I'm going to the library now. Don't you want to go to a matinee this afternoon? The mechanical werewolf from 100,000 Leagues Under the Sea is playing. Oh, I'm afraid I'll have to miss it. So you're lost, cousin. Hello, Uncle Mark. Come on, now. Oh, boy. Patty, what are you doing? Watching our new neighbors move in. They have a grand piano. Maybe they have a teenage son who plays it. Or perhaps a gray-haired old grandmother. There's a baseball bat. That doesn't belong to any gray-haired old grandmother. Patty, don't you think you're being just a little inquisitive? Also friendly. How else can you get to know your neighbors? Look, they're carrying in a tool chest. Maybe the father's a burglar. There's a tennis racket. It looks like a teenage boy's tennis racket. He plays baseball and tennis. He's an athlete. What is she, a spy for the FBI? There's a car pulling up in front of the house. Family's getting out. There's the wife. Mm, she's wearing a mink coat. There's the burglar. There's my baseball player. What does he look like? He looks like he's 12 years old. That's what he looks like. 12 years old? Yippee, I got a new best friend. <laughs> yeah. Look at that flower chair. You sure don't have much taste in furniture. All right, Patty, come away from the window and stop being so nosy. Who's being nosy? <laughs> Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But they're cousins, identical cousins all the way. One pair of matching bookends, different as night and day. Where Kathy adores a minuet, the ballet russe. And Crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll. A hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet. Still they're cousins. Identical cousins and you find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind. When cousins are two of a kind. Who are you? This is Keith Gordon, our new next door neighbor. He plays shortstop. Hi. How are you? Hello, Keith. Welcome to the neighborhood. Where are you from? He comes from Iowa. Idaho. In Brooklyn, we pronounce it Iowa. I understand you're going to be our next door neighbor. Yes, sir. My father moved away from Idaho to get away from his sister-in-law. My father's a lawyer. He makes $12,000 a year. You know, moving days are really kind of hectic. Maybe you'd like to have lunch here with us. Oh. What have you got? Hamburgers. Okay. Till my brother come too? Oh, you've got a little brother? Why, certainly he may come. You two can play here today. And, uh, Patty can help entertain you. Mom, the mechanical werewolf is Oh, the mechanical werewolf can wait. And that's sure nice of you, Mrs. Lane. I'll go get Scotty. Oh, who wants to play nursemaid to three tadpoles? Have you ever seen a beautiful day go right down the drain? Oh, it won't hurt you this one afternoon. Papa, these are my golden years. Every minute counts. <laughs> He's coming. We'll leave for him. Good morning. I'm Scott Gordon. Well, hello, Scott. This is Mr. Lane. Well, Scott. Our son, Ross. All right. Excuse me, I think I left the water running upstairs. <laughs> That's Patty. Keith told me we were invited to lunch. That's very kind of you, Mrs. Lane, but we couldn't impose like that. Why, it's no imposition at all. I understand your father's an attorney. He's a criminal lawyer, and you should see some of his clients. <laughs> Did you get the water turned off all right, honey? Oh, yes. Thank you, Father. <sighs> well, I guess we'd better be going. Oh, aren't you going to stay to lunch? Well, some other time. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, my mother will drop over and give uh, your mother some tips on markets and cleaners and so on. I'm sure she'll appreciate that. And then uh, I can give you all the pert dirt on the neighborhood as seen through the eyes of a native. The pert dirt? Well, you know, the lowdown. How to tell the Mary Janes from the Scotties. If you get hung up with an ankle biter or a rink, you, you may just as well bag it. <laughs> You'll uh, have to teach me the language. 
whatever it is. Sylvia flipped. I mean, not. Uh, be pleasure. Well, I guess I better get going. Uh, pardon me. It was nice meeting you. Come on, Keith. So long. I'll walk you home. Beautiful. I wouldn't call him beautiful. No, of course you wouldn't. But I would. You. What about Richard? Richard. Oh, Richard. He's in Wyoming with his grandmother. Whoever said absence makes the heart grow fonder must have been a man, and not a very bright one. <laughs> What? I said I thought you were going to a movie this afternoon. Oh. I decided to stick close to home and get a fast tan so I'd look good for him. Him who? Our new neighbor. You'll meet him at our wedding. Do you know what I love about you, Patty? You have both feet firmly planted in the clouds. Well, meeting a boy is better than killing a day at the library. Oh, I didn't exactly kill the day. I met a boy myself. You're putting me on. No. It was quite nice, actually. Handsome? Attractive. Mine's a blockbuster. Mine's rather shy, but very intellectual. Mine's the athletic type. He's an extrovert. Say, why don't we double date? Mine hasn't asked me for a date yet. Neither is mine, but why quibble about detail? Let's all go to a movie tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't just ask mine to take me to a movie. Boy, you need a lot of shaping up. You don't have to ask him. If you play your cards right, he'll ask you, and he'll never know what hit him. What are you looking for? I want to see what movie the boys are going to take us to tomorrow night. Have you ever seen a dream walking, Maggie? Well, he's it. And he lives right next door. I mean, I can walk him home in practically no time. I'll call you back. Hi, Keith. Are you having a good time? Of All course right. he's having a good time. He's my best friend. Come on. Uh, how's your family? Your mother, your father. Your brother. <laughs> They're okay, I guess. Uh, where, where are they now? She means where's your brother. She's looking for a date for tomorrow night. I don't know where he is. Do you know if your brother has any plans for tomorrow night? I don't know. Why don't you ask him? <laughs> If you ever decide to take up mind reading, you'll make a fortune at it. What are you talking about? You are absolutely right. Mine asked me to go to the movie tomorrow night. Gong Ho! I told you we'd make it. Now all I have to do is get my half moving. How did you work it? I didn't work it. I was at the library and he came up to me and started talking. And Miss Harvey asked us to be quiet. So he said we could talk better at the shake shop. So we went to the shake shop and he asked me for a date. I couldn't have handled it better myself. Now I'll tell you what my strategy is going to be. I'm going to take the bull by the horns. I'll get it. That might be the bull himself. Olé. Huh? Oh, it's just an expression. Come on in. We were just talking about you. Well, I came about tomorrow night. Oh? First I thought it would be interesting to see a movie, but then... What a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? Come on inside. Oh, I'd like you to meet my cousin, Kathy. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Scott. You've met? Well, yes, we met this morning. I, I told you. Don't you remember? You mean... <laughs> he's... And then we met again this afternoon in the library. You mean he's... Kathy, I came to tell you, instead of going to a movie tomorrow night, I thought we could go to a concert at Philharmonic. Van Clyburn's playing. Would you like to hear him? I'd love to. Patty, would your date be interested in that? We could all go together. <clears throat> oh, uh, I, I don't think so. Hey, why don't you call him? Ah, uh, he's uh, busy tomorrow night. Oh, that's too bad. Mm. Well, I have some things to do upstairs. I'll see you, Scotty. Where'd I go wrong? <laughs> you and your cousin really.
really get along well, don't you? Oh, yes. We're more than cousins. We're very good friends. I saw him first at Double Crossing Boy Snatcher. He's mine. That's ridiculous. He asked me for a date tomorrow night. Oh, sure. After you cornered him and forced him to. Shh. I didn't corner him, but I didn't force him to. Oh, you quiet ones are the ones to watch. My own cousin Double Crossing her own cousin. Why didn't you tell me he was your boy next door? Would that have stopped you? No. That's what I thought. Shh. You told me he was intellectual and not very good-looking. That's the way I saw him. You told me he was an athlete and, and handsome. That's the way I saw him. You have Richard. I'll trade you Richard and two Beatle albums. <laughs> oh, why don't we let Scotty decide for himself? That's all right with me. You mean if he chooses me, you'll forget about it? That's exactly what I mean. But don't count on it, cousin. <laughs> doing? I'm shoveling snow. Hey, that's very funny. Gee, uh, homework can sure be a drag on a beautiful day like this. All the other kids are out playing baseball. I know. You should be out there with them. Yeah. I can just see you. You're standing up at bat. It's the bottom of the ninth. The other team's winning three to nothing with two outs and bases loaded. Everybody's counting on you. Is their last chance. I am? Three balls and one strike. Crowd's getting tense. Put your winds up. Stops. Looks around, makes sure all the runners are on base. Here comes the pitch! Strike! I'm not doing too well, am I? <laughs> Three and two if you miss this one, the game's over. Am I going to miss it? How do I know? Here comes the wind-up. He throws the ball. It's right over the plate. And you hit it. It's... It's... A home run! Listen to the crowd yell. Yeah, listen to the crowd yell. You won the ball game. Four to three. Oh, boy. Go out and get him, Tiger. Who's gonna do my homework? Oh. <laughs> I am. How can I play in the game? I don't have a glove. Why don't you buy one? I'd have to dip in a capital. All right, I'll buy one. And, and do, my do homework. your homework. Okay. Who do I have to kill? You don't have to kill anybody. All I want you to do is talk to Keith for me. He's too young for you. I want you to talk to Keith and find out from him about Scotty. You know, what he likes and doesn't like. His taste in sports, books, girls. I know his taste in girls. You do? Yeah. He likes Kathy. <laughs> Do you want that glove or don't you? I don't know. I'd hate to double-cross Kathy. Oh. Well, all right then. Just forget it. Okay. I'll do it. I'll hate myself, but I'll do it. Good boy. I'll come see you someday in Yankee Stadium. I'm not bad. Just we. Favorite actor, Lawrence Olivier. Favorite sports, horseback riding and archery. Favorite food, strawberries with honey on them. Favorite color, green. Is that the kind of stuff you wanted? Exactly. The FBI couldn't have done better. Do I get my glove? Here, buy your own ball team. Thanks. I still hate myself. <laughs> Favorite book, Moby Dick. It's a wonderful concert. Thank you, Scotty. You know, Kathy, it's great finding someone who shares the same interests you have. You're the only girl I know who likes Bach cantatas. Am I? Mm -hmm. I'm so glad. So am I. I'll fix you a snack. <laughs> Hello, Patty. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't hear you. Captain Ahab was just going after Moby Dick, and I... You're reading Moby Dick? Yeah. 
I'm afraid I'm kind of a nut about it. I read it every few months. I've never seen you read it before. What's that bow and arrow for? What bow and arrow? Oh, this. I'm so used to holding it, I didn't even notice it. I'm getting ready for the archery tournament. You're interested in archery? Oh, yeah, well, I'm, well, I'm not out horseback riding. Gee, me too. Yeah? Oh, would you like some strawberries? I'm afraid I'm always eating them. Well, so am I. I guess it's my favorite food in the whole world. No. <laughs> oh! Wait a minute. I ruined them. Put honey on them. Honey? Yeah. That's the way I love them. No. Well, I thought I was the only one who ate them that way. I guess we never really got to talk before. Well, oh, it's never too late. Uh, shall we get that snack now, Scotty? No, I'll just have some of these, thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I must have read this ten times. Me too. You'll probably disagree with me, but I hope Olivier does the remake. Don't agree. He's my favorite actor. Really? There's still some things about the book that I don't understand. It's just full of symbolism, you know? Well, I know. That's what I like about it. It's, it's deep. Yeah. Tell me, Scott, do you think that Moby Dick is really a white whale? Or do you think that he's that terrible, terrible thing inside us that we must all hunt and kill? I think he's Captain Ahab's conscience. Do you? That's exactly what I think. <laughs> well, I've written a thesis on it. Have you? I'd love to read it. Oh, would you? I'll bring it to school tomorrow. Maybe we can meet at the uh, shake shop and I'll give it to you, if it won't bore you. Born? I think it's the most interesting thing in the whole world. Then I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can get some archery in. Oh, great. I'd like that. <laughs> Good night, Kath. Gee, Kathy, thanks for a great evening. Good night, Scott. All right. My book. Sure. Thank you. I can't be without it. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, Patty. Good night. Good night. Did you have a nice time with Scotty? Yes. Did you? What do you mean? I mean that when you're out in that archery tournament tomorrow, eating honey-covered strawberries and shooting at white whales, don't turn your back, because you're liable to find a harpoon in it. If there's anything I can't stand, it's a sore loser. to say. How long has this been going on? Since he moved next door. The competition is fierce. Gee, nobody ever fought over me like that. I most certainly did. I just didn't let you know about it. Oh? You want some? Mm. Well, with all the boys there are in the world, I don't see why Patty and Kathy have to like the same one. I didn't even think they liked the same type. They don't. Each of them sees different things in Scotty. Patty sees him as a handsome athlete, and Kathy sees him as an introverted intellectual. Sounds like a well-rounded boy. He's very nice. Well, how does he feel about them? Which one does he like? That's the problem. He likes them both. Right. Sounds to me like one of them is going to have to give him up. Which one? Well, I know the answer to that. I'd make myself editor of the Lovelorn column. Martin. Please do something. Okay. I'll make another sandwich. Chicken, potato salad, coleslaw, corned beef, uh, hot dogs, 
ham sandwiches, and soft drinks. Well, I've got my half. I wonder what he's bringing. Going on a picnic? Yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I am. Scott just loves picnics. Well, have a good time. We will. Look, I'm sorry about this, Kathy. When you tangle with the master, you have to expect to be outmaneuvered. There's Scotty. He's so prompt. Another one of his admirable qualities. Gong Ho! Oh, and don't wait up for me. I'll be back late. Hello, darling. Hiya, Patty. How'd you know it was me? You weren't supposed to be back for another two weeks yet. Oh, I really missed you. Did you miss me? I knew how miserable you'd be here all alone without me. What's that? What's what? Uh, that basket. It looks like somebody's gone on a picnic. Oh, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Uh, you? Me? No, no, uh, Kathy. Uh, and you and I are going to go for a nice ride in the country. Oh, that sounds great. I'll be right back. You've got to do me a favor. It's a matter of life and death. Are you sure? Absolutely. Then forget it. Oh, please, Kathy. I want you to pretend to be me and go on that picnic with Scotty this afternoon. Why should I do that? Because Richard got back. I could never explain Scotty to him. Look, you can keep my date with Scotty this afternoon as me, and then I can keep my dinner date with Scotty as me. I shouldn't do it. Why not? You won't have any trouble fooling him. Think of all the fun you'll have at the beach. All right, I'll do it. You're very persuasive. I had a girl. Richard certainly picked an awkward time to come home, didn't he? He sure did. I'll never forget you for this, Kath. It's my pleasure. Mm -hmm. I remember, this is just a long hour. Kathy just left on her picnic. Did she? Yeah, she's getting in the car with some guy. He's not much to look at. Well, they can't all look like you, Richard. No, no I guess not. <laughs> Kathy's a pretty thoughtful girl. Mm -hmm. You know, when she phoned me in Wyoming and told me how lonely you were, I came right back. She phoned you in Wyoming? Yeah, she wanted to surprise you. <laughs> and she did. She really... You didn't have any trouble fooling Scotty? Oh, no, no. He thought I was you. Good. Hello? Yes, this is Kathy. Hello. Tonight? Yes, I'd love to. All right, then. I'll, I'll see you at 7 o'clock. Thank you. Goodbye, Scotty. Scotty? Maybe you've forgotten, but we have a dinner date tonight. I don't think so. You don't think so what? I'm afraid you and Scott had a terrible quarrel this afternoon. We did. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid you were really quite rude to him. I was. Therefore, I, I don't believe he'll be seeing you again. Well, I'd better get dressed. You know how Scott hates to be kept waiting. Bye. <coughs> Tangle with a master, you have to expect to be outmaneuvered. 
Here's Kathy who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But they're cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find. They laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk. 